Hello and welcome to Decluttering uh, Memorabilia and Keepsakes. Looking forward to sharing lots of information today as we uh, talk about this important topic, something that a lot of people do have a lot of challenges with. If you're joining us live, pop in the chat, where are you joining us from and what you're looking forward to learning? Today we have Mir uh, Miriam says uh, she's in Florida and her parents' pictures is what she's looking forward to um, getting some help with. James is on the coast of Maine and they have a big collection of books and art supplies. Awesome. We'll look forward to um, helping out with that. And of course, Mary Lou is here, my awesome virtual assistant that helps put all this together. So thank you, Mary Lou, always for your help. And Bill, thank you for coming. One of our regulars, great to see you. Keep those comments coming in as we're coming through and working on the this session. As I said, uh, this is being recorded and will be popped on YouTube, particularly for those people that weren't able to attend in person today. Uh, and so if any of those people are watching and listening along, they can use the comment section to participate. I won't be able to um, sort of reply straight away, but I will see those comments. Um, as I said, let me know what you're looking forward to learning and um, you know, do you really need to declutter and organise your memorabilia? And what is it in particular that you're needing help with? So my business, Space and Time, I will in introduce myself shortly, uh, but my business, Space and Time, is all about uh, making conscious choices with how we use our space and time. Uh, it's about creating ways and systems to make life simpler and particularly making declutter decluttering simpler. We're going to talk about lots of different tips and techniques to do that today. We'd love to hear what's your intention. As I said, share that with us in the chat. What are you looking to learn today? Because changes of any sort are much simpler and easier if we know what we're trying to achieve today. Uh, and later in the session, I'm going to share some more ways we can continue on this decluttering journey together with uh, some other op uh, workshops and some one-on-one -on -one decluttering that is uh, available to you um, via Zoom, considering we are being joined from people all over the world today, which is very exciting. So we're going to look at decluttering memorabilia in and keepsakes, particularly kids' clothes and their artwork, um, travel mementos and family heirlooms. We will look, have a look a little bit uh, of a look at family photos today. We had a couple of people that already mentioned they need some help with that. We will talk about that a little, but that is a whole kettle of fish on its own. That could be a whole day of workshop, but I will give you some pointers at least um, to get you clear on those projects and also to get you underway. And also looking at minimising keepsakes and the challenges along the way and when we are decluttering and organising our memorabilia and keepsakes. So that's what we are looking at doing today. And we are going to do that using this space and time organising system. And that's a six-step system I created quite a number of years ago, and it works perfectly when we are organising both our space and our time. And we will talk a little bit more in detail about each of the steps today. The first one being stop the stuff. Let's stop more memorabilia and keepsakes coming in. Uh, the second step, making sure you are committed to being organised. We want to sort the stuff. Then we'll be decluttering, which is the things you no longer need step. Uh, then easy storage for your, your stuff and then maintenance tools once we've done all this great work. So they're the six steps of the space and time organising system. If you've been to one of our sessions before, you would be very familiar with all of those steps and looking forward to sharing with them uh, with you today. So the first step is stop the stuff. So, you know, what a good question to ask ourselves to start with is what is the big deal of having too many memor too much memorabilia and keepsakes? You know, one of the big problems, Haley and Lee, thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, what a great thing to think about is that having too much of this stuff can be so frustrating and overwhelming. If we can't find what we want, you can't put your hand on 
the photo of grandma or you know the, the bits that she may have given you at some stage it's so frustrating and it often is caused by just having too much of it and um it's, you know we will d definitely uh, look at that today and of course if you've got a lot of these special things around the house wherever you're looking there's heightened emotions everywhere there's emotions everywhere there's memories everywhere and sometimes that can be overstimulating particularly um, I find with the, the clients that I'm working whether they're on the spectrum whether it's ADHD uh, autism Asperger's having too much stuff everywhere is just too much for them and so they really like the idea of having um, less things around so it's not just slamming in the face all the time. So we'll be looking at reducing that overstimulation. And also all of this stuff just takes up too much precious space. If we haven't got room for the things that we're using every day, if we haven't got our, uh, can't get to our sports things that we want, like whether it's our workout gear and those sorts of things, or we can't find our our art artwork, you know the 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 um, the exact art project that you are working on at the moment because it's too much other stuff in the road. You know we we just get really weighed down and it makes everything so much more difficult if things are taking up our precious space. And sometimes when there's too much stuff, we just can't make a decision on where to start. We can't decide on what to do with it, where to put it, if we should get rid of it or not. So this indecision can be paralyzing. So it's really important to think about how much of this stuff you want in your life and how much it affects the way you run your life. And is it how you want to spend your time? Do you want to spend your time juggling all of this stuff I think I'd rather go and have a coffee with a friend rather than spending all the time you know dealing with all these things so let's have a good think about what we're keeping in our homes and stop more of it from coming in here's some specific ways to stop more stuff from coming in uh, particularly travel memorabilia we're so lucky that we can actually get out and travel these days uh, not too long ago when I was presenting these uh, these workshops we'll be going God, I wish I could go out and buy some travel memorabilia but now that we are moving around just be really wary of what you pick up and bring home you know that beautiful sombrero that you you pick up on your travels or those Italian shoes or you know, some of these amazing bits and pieces that we pick up along the way, we might, might not ever use again. So maybe even just a photo of that beautiful item might be uh, a better way to remember the um, the occasion rather than bringing the home, the, sorry, the whole thing home. So just be wary of the things that you're picking up when you're out and about and how you're uh, remembering the, your travel there's a good little quote there uh, that says, you know, your home is a living space, not a storage space. So that's a good one to have a think about too, particularly when you're out and about on these travels, particularly as we're talking in this instant about travel memorabilia. You know, your home is a living space, not a storage space. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're reaching out to, to grab that next trinket. But I, I, I always say um, as I'm presenting that I'm not talking about us living in white sterile boxes with nothing in it. I, I, that's not what I'm talking about at all. My home has things. You can see our bits and pieces, our books, our stuff that we have in our home. Uh, I'm not talking about that minimalist look at all. If you want to do that, go for it. But I'm just talking about having the right amount of stuff around for you and your family. Uh, some other ways we can stop more uh, sort of memorabilia and stuff from coming in our front door is that to limit the number of interests and hobbies that we are working on at the one time. I've got one client in particular that completely and utterly disagrees with me on this one. I should be able to do this, 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 this and this. But when you're doing all of these projects, whether it's sewing, whether it's um, um, a scrapbooking, whether it's quilting, whether it's uh, watercolour, that's just a few things that they're working on at the moment. A lot of stuff comes with that. So, yes, please have your hobbies, but maybe we can just scale it back a little bit and just be working on a couple of them 
unless you're living in a big, great big warehouse and you've got space for these. And let's just um, limit the number of hobbies and interests we have at a time. And then when we're out and about and we're collecting things for those hobbies and interests, please try and limit the amount of stuff that you bring home in relation to those things. Don't pick up the pamphlets about it. Take a photo of it. Find it online. Make a note about it so you can look it up later on. Because we often, I was just trying to look around for some pamphlets at my house, but I don't really have any because I don't pick them up. But, you know, you often bring them home and never even look at them. So if we don't bring them in the front door in the first place, it's a great way to uh, limit the amount of stuff that we have in our homes. And again, we're still talking about ways to reduce the amount of uh, stuff associated with our in, uh, interests and hobbies. Um, we can all just say no thanks. If somebody offers you something, it may be a freebie, it may be related to something that you're interested in, but it's really not and you've already got one, just say no thanks. You don't need to give any excuses or you know any explanation at all. No thanks is all that you need to say. And also, if you're going out and about and you're going, say, to uh, an expo, say, if it's a disability expo, if you're going to um, an expo about renovating a car show, write down the lists of things that you are interested in and, you know, try and stick to that list rather than just going along and choosing everything that you see when you're at those um, special interest shows. Uh, let's try and bring less home. Um, and then we've got less to manage and deal with it in the first place. All right, we'll keep moving on. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the chat as well about what different keepsakes and memorabilia have accumulated at your home. Pop that in the chat and let me know if any of these ways of reducing stuff and memorabilia in your home, let me know which of these tips are working well for you. And I wanted to talk as well here about reducing the amount of family heirlooms that come into your house in the first place. I'm going to talk about decluttering them shortly and spending a bit of time that, on that. But it was really about being mindful about what you let into your home. Um, something that first dot point there is reminding us that these things that belong to your mum your grandma, your auntie, your brother, whoever, they are not your family members. Yes, they are a representation of them. That's a part of them. There's a story that's a part of it, but it's not actually the, that's not actually them. So we don't need to hang on to their bits and pieces to remember them. Uh, there are a lot of other different ways that we can do that and to honour them. And we'll talk about that when we talk come to storage and also letting things go. But just see if we can separate that the items are not your family members. Yeah, they certainly, as I said, remind us of those great times and it's uh, they are important to have around. Again, I'm not saying don't ha have any of them, but I'd really like you to curate your collection so that we have less around us, so that we have uh, room in our homes for all those other important things and our other important family members. Some homes I go to, there's no room for anybody. Um, so really just bearing that in mind. Again, in relation to family heirlooms, someone may offer you something within the family and you don't really want it, don't like it, you don't have room for it. Uh, you can quite easily say no thanks. Again, practicing saying no, it, no is a complete sentence. You can say no thanks. Um, and somebody else in the family can look after that. You know, why do you have to be the keeper of all family heirlooms? Uh, I know that a lot of my clients uh, come to me through the National Disability Insurance Scheme, and for whatever reason it might be, whether it's because they're not working so much anymore or they seem to have more time on their hands, the family members just seem to drop a lot of things on, on these people, on my clients, and, and their family members are expecting that they are going to be the keeper of all keepsakes. And I think that is really unfair. So we wouldn't need to pull, uh, you know, pluck up our courage and um, put our 
big girl pants on and uh, and if you don't want to be the keeper of those things you can say no thanks um choose some of your favorite pieces if you are offered something uh, of the family heirlooms um you don't have to keep it all just keep one teacup of grandma's just keep one vase just keep one string of pearls um or you know some tools out of grandpa's shed you don't have to keep every tool that grandpa ever owned uh just as a way of remembering that person and that last dot point saying there it is your choice this is your home uh you are to surround yourself with the things that uh, move you closer to the life that you want to live rather than too much stuff getting in the way of the life you want to live so um there are just a few tips on stopping more stuff from coming in. Uh, Lin Lindley says uh, piano. Yes, that is a, a tricky, 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 tricky one. That um, being offered something like that and saying yes or no is a very interesting uh, decision to make. Okay, so let's keep on moving on to step number two uh in the space and time organizing system and that is your commitment to being organized and as i go through this i want you to really start to have a good thing think about why are you hanging on to this stuff you know is it validation is it a reminder of happy times is it a snapshot of history is it family pressure and are you hanging on to these things for the right reason if you love it if you really want your, all these things of your family together, if you enjoy it, you get great pleasure out of it, if it's awesome, if it's your thing, please go for it. But if it's a burden, if it's hard work, it's exhausting, it's overwhelming, it's too much, please see if we can reduce the amount that we have uh, and just um, see if there's another way um, that we can have less things around us. But really would love to know uh the reason that you're hanging on to the stuff these keepsakes and memorabilia pop a note there in the um in in the chat would really love to hear your thoughts so your commitment to being organized is to starting to make a start on the decluttering process and re really all the time when I'm talking with my clients it's about starting small it might just be 10 minutes it might be two hours uh, we just want little bits, the top drawer, one tiny little box or even a, of um, an envelope of printed photos. That might be enough to get you going, get you started. And then little bits make up to be a very big and, um, uh, you know, make great progress just by starting 10 minutes. Looking at a whole garage full of things is might be way too much. But yeah, I can certainly spend 10 minutes with my timer on, you know, on your phone, on your watch, whatever kitchen timer, put that 10 minutes on and uh, start your process now um, and really make a commitment to you to, and to yourself to, to get this job done. And I would love for you to start that commitment by literally making an appointment with yourself in the diary put the 10 minutes in uh, a couple of times a day or a couple of hours of, um, you know a few times a week if you've got quite a big project it will probably take you a bit of time but just like you know running a marathon as the saying goes it starts with one step so let's just start in a small way uh, oh, that third point there saying, I am not my stuff. We are more than our possessions. We don't need these things to remind us that our family loved us. We don't need this stuff to, um, you know, as validation. You know, it's a lot of these things are from our past and they do make us who we are, but all, a lot of that stuff should be in here. We know these things. We don't need our stuff to reinforce that either. Um, and also, you know, holding on to too much stuff can imprison us and letting go is much more freeing. I was saying before about being the weight of all of these things that we have um, can really feel like we can't make a step, we can't move forward and, and it can feel a bit like a prison. Um, so letting go is so much more freeing. 
Uh, being committed to being organized also reminds us that there is no magic wand, as I just said, that this process may take you a while and may take you years. I do know of many of my clients that I've been working with, as well as other stories I've heard from people, that um, that some downsizing can take years and years. And that's great to be able to start that process so you can do it at your pace rather than get to the end of your life or, or or some time when you need to downsize and go, oh, we need to get rid of 45 years worth of stuff out of the house that you've been living in. Uh, so let's start the process now. As I said, there is no magic wand. Uh, you can certainly get some help, whether it's friends, family, or a professional such as myself, but uh, we do need to take the time to work through all of these things. Uh, being organised takes time, it takes commitment, focus and persistence. Just like being a professional rugby league player, all of those things are very important. Can't be good at something if you don't practice it and make it an important part of your life. And we can also break the process down into very small pieces. Um, as I said about running a marathon, you don't just start running. You need a little bit of a, uh, a training program. Let's start with you know a couple of minutes of running a day, or in this case, a few minutes of decluttering a day, and we will build up and we do get better at it with practice. Uh, and you will need to change how you are doing things. If you found that you're in a bit of a mess now, you can either go back to how you were doing things when you weren't so um, cluttered and uh, disorganized, um, or create some new habits because there might be some um you know new circumstances that have come up that you that you need to work with now that mean that you can't quite live your life how you have in the past so let's make this process work for you and but as I said we need to make that commitment to ourselves to start the process and get it in the diary so I'm going to step on to step three we're going pretty good for time this is sort your stuff um, I love the sorting stage. It literally means about, you know, starting to put like items together. So it might be sorting the travel memorabilia. If you've got a lot of it, you might sort it into the year that you went or the country that you visited. If you had uh, some photos that you're sorting, you might start by looking at uh, sorting by the decade or, or by the family member. Um, and if you're looking at kids' artwork, you might start to sort it by the child and perhaps if it's got a date on it, the time that they made it. So rather than just have this big pile of photos like this, you might end up with five or six different ones based on the time that they were taken or the family members, if you're going to be dishing them out to the different family members. Um, and then you've got a good idea of what you've got. It's more manageable. You start to see a little bit of process, a little bit of organisation. And then from this sorting step, we're going to be able to continue on and start to be able to let things go. So just giving the example of sorting the kids' artwork. Now, this could be literally as the kids' artwork is coming home. Um, from school now or it might have been sitting in your garage for 30 years I've had people coming along to these sessions before that they still have their kids artwork and you know they're they're grown-ups and have their own kids now so this may be a little bit of a sorting process that might you might be able to help this was Charlie's artwork a few um, schoolwork sorry at the end of the year a couple of years ago got him to help me sort into four piles it was recycling so this might be a squiggle a, you know a piece of rubbish that just got thrown into the school bag at the end of the year so that was a recycling pile definitely keep like that nice stripy box I think he is down the bottom right hand corner tell me more about it um, might be something that you could make a video with the child. Um, even if they're an adult, I've suggested that to um, people before and they thought that was a great idea. Get the adults to have a look at their artwork and, and make a video about it and talk about kinder or their early years of school so that you have that as a keepsake. Uh, and, and then you can let go of the item. And maybe uh, another pile might be unsure. 
So these sorts of piles, these categories for sorting can work with school artwork and their actual writing work, that sort of thing, but it can work for paperwork, all sorts of different things, a similar sort of process to this. Again, then you've got four piles. You can have a look at each pile individually and then make some more decisions from there. Um, there was something else I was going to say about the recycling. Oh, yes. You know, one squiggle on a piece of paper, uh, that might be awesome for some kids. I do know some families that their kids hardly bought home any artwork from, from school. So they might keep that one page with a squiggle on it. Uh, but generally, squiggles aren't worth keeping and we don't need to keep every squiggle that our kids have ever done. When they're at school, they're learning art, they're learning writing. It's the process. It's not the end result that we're after. They're learning how to use a pencil. They're using, learning the, the, the scissors and the, you know, all of those things you learn when you're at school. It's all a part of the journey rather than the piece of art being the final project or the destination. So we don't need to keep everything that our kids have ever created. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you're trying to sort out your kids' work. Uh, yeah, Lindley says, good idea to have a date on the art, the, on the work that we're doing. It is excellent too. It can help us identify all sorts of things uh, when we have dates on things. Absolutely is helpful. Uh, going through things, that was all about sorting. So that's... Um, and the last question there was, do you have lots of artwork at your house? Um, you know, whether it's the kids or it might be your own artwork, um, that we might be able to start to chip away and let things go, bearing in mind that we don't have to keep all of those things um, that we've ever created. So this step was all about sorting and how sorting like items can help us to be able to let them go once we can see a bit clearer uh, what we have. All right, we're going to move on to the fourth step with things you no longer need. Uh, this is all about decluttering. So let's think about some ways that we can easily let things go. Uh, and here are a few tips for overcoming some of those difficulties. I'm going to ask you a few questions in relation to if somebody gave you a gift. Now I need to read this because I always say it wrong <laughs> so if somebody gave you a gift and they if someone I always read it can't even read it right if you gave someone a gift that sounds better you're giving someone a gift if you gave someone a gift and they no longer wanted it would you expect them to hang on to it if you gave someone a gift and they didn't like it perhaps it's not their style not the right color they already had one would you expect them to hang on to it? If you gave them a gift, would you expect them to hang on to it forever? And I'm pretty sure the answer is no to all of those questions. If you gave them a, a gift, you wouldn't want them to hang on to it if they didn't like it, um, if it's not them, and you would not expect them to hang on to it forever. So why, when somebody gives us a gift, do we ex think, that that person wants you to have it forever. If they come to your house and come looking for it, well, they can look for it at the local op shop. Now, if you didn't like it, it was yours. They gave it to you. It's yours. You can decide what to do with it. Uh, so just bear that in mind that you are not obligated to hang on to gifts. So if you've got things in the cupboard that you got given for your a uh, wedding anniversary, and that was 35 years ago, um, give yourself permission to be able to let it go because it's of no use to anybody in the cupboard. Um, let's make that space available for something else that you might actually want to put in the cupboard. So just letting things go that you no longer need, particularly if they are gifts um, that you have been given. Now, I would also like to you to maybe change your perspective on our stuff and why we're hanging on to them. I want you to change the way you look at your items and also have a good think, are they really important? Just going to show you this blog that my um, son Robbie 
wrote a few years ago, three years ago. Mary Lou, you can see that okay? Um, yes, it really is. Really, thank you. So this is a little guy called Captain Risky. He um, was just like a little bobblehead guy that we acquired. And Robbie wanted to get rid of it. And my husband could not believe it. Why would Robbie want to get rid of it? Um, so I asked him. And these are some of the reasons that my teenager was just happy to let it go. And he says that it was acquired and not deliberately chosen. So Captain Risky turned up at our house somehow uh, uh, over the past few years. At the time, Robbie thought it was novel. So he put it on his desk. And it was not something he ever wanted or saved up for or deliberately cho chose it or purchased it. He just acquired it. So if you've got some things at your house that have just turned up, you're totally allowed to let it go when, when you've changed your mind and you don't want it anymore. You're not obligated to hang on to it, according to a teenager. The next part was Robbie says joy or misery. He says we normally surround ourselves with things to keep us happy or remind us of something. But what is the point if you if it no longer brings you the same joy or only brings you misery? They were Robbie's words when he wrote this. So stand back and think without any bias, do you really need it? Is it giving you joy or is it giving it misery? Uh, the next one, he says, if it's no longer seen, Robbie said, if you are at the point where you don't notice it, it's obviously not necessary for you to still have it. Someone else might be able to use that blanket or somebody else could use that teddy bear. Uh, try and think of others could get better use out of it than you have. And then there's just three more options here that Robbie suggested why a teenager is happy to just let things go and not get really attached to stuff like adults perhaps sometimes do. The next one was outgrown. Robbie is now 14 and Captain Risky is not that cool. If Captain Risky had tattoos, was dressed in black and had a black crow on his shoulder, he may have more of a chance of hanging around for a bit longer. But Captain Risky has been outgrown. <clears throat> uh, the next one was nothing is forever if you're a teen. Robbie gives his room a good clean out once a month. He rearranges his furniture, prints out new photos or uh, favourite photo album covers and starts with a clear slate. It, uh, it seems changing your mind and the items that surround you is a teen's prerogative. Maybe it's not just a teen's prerogative. Maybe we can do that too. And the last point that he put in this blog that he wrote about letting stuff go like a teen is there's no emotional attachment. The above factors show that Captain Risky is not part of Robbie or a significant part of his life. It's an object that was a bit of fun at the time, but there is no emotional attachment to the item. So it's time to let go. Just thought that might be interesting to see those different ways uh, that teenagers look at things and uh, whether that might be a new, fresh perspective for us as adults that maybe we are hanging on to things um, unnecessarily, perhaps. All right, trying to go along to the next one. Continuing on with the idea of letting go of things you no longer need, and the, that is the idea of donating it to an amazing local charity. Now, these two I've listed here are Melbourne charities, but they're are amazing charities all around the world that do great things um, for people in your community. If something's got its tags on still um, or, you know, it's still in very good condition, please um, make the effort to look them up um, and donate to a charity so that somebody else can use the item. You know, what's, um, what's sentimental to you? Uh, baby's blanket, baby's booties, you know, any of those little things you might still have that belong to your kids, some child could actually wear them, um, would be fantastic if you would make those donations. Um, sorry, just had a message, just making sure that it wasn't somebody that was a bit stuck uh, and couldn't find the link. 
Uh, and how about the idea of shifting your perspective? There is far more joy in giving things away than can ever be found in owning more. And that's from becomingminimalist.com. So are there some ideas there? Were there some ideas from the team? Uh, were there some good ideas for donating or shifting your perspective? Is there something there? Please pop it in the chat um, that's going to help you let things go that you no longer need. Easy storage for your stuff. Um, thanks, Mary Lou. She just said she loves that blog from Robbie. When you first read it, it really made you have a good think. Yeah, I think that's a very good. And then you could say, yes, I can let some of those things go. I don't have to be so attached to some of these things. Um, thanks, Mary Lou, for that feedback. And if anybody else has got any thoughts on letting things go, um, some of the points that I just gave, or maybe you've got some tips that you use or some advice that somebody's given you on letting things go. Okay, step five, easy storage for your stuff. Let's fly through this. Um, with the idea here, it's easy storage because it fits into S-Y-S-T-E-M. The E is uh, for easy storage. But it's also deliberately put at this part of the six steps of the system because if we've done our decluttering, uh, up to this point now we know what we're keeping then we can get just the right storage for the things that we are keeping there's no good going out and buying containers or storage systems or shelves when we don't know what we're trying to keep um, and so this point is a really good one once we've done the decluttering to start to get the storage sorted out um, and we want to make it easy so that's easy to retrieve and easy to put back. If we're talking about memorabilia and those sorts of things, perhaps we don't access it so often, so it might not need to be that easy to, to put back where it is stored. But we really want it to be um, easy and not just lying all over the house. If something is too difficult, you know, you can't get out to the shed or you can't reach it, those sorts of things. Um, that can be um, difficult as well because we just haven't got that motivation to put it back where it should live. Just let me have a quick look at the chat. Um, oh, Jade, I like that. Jade says, I like to ask, would I buy this item today? If not, I let it go. That's good. I have heard something similar, Jade, to that one is um, if I didn't already own it. Uh, would I buy it? So they're very similar thing. Uh, would I buy this item today? If not, I let it go. So you could look around and some of the memorabilia or things in your house and go, you know, would you buy it today? And, and if it's uh, something from the 1970s that you never really liked, um, and you know, something like that, yeah, let it go. I like that one. Thank you for sharing. So here are some ideas for storage for your memorabilia and keepsakes. There's a million different things online. If you ever need some specific help to store something like storage for trophies, like actually that's what this sort of back one was uh, referring to. I think they are Academy Awards. So you probably don't have one of these in your home, but you might like um, to display your dancing trophies, your golf, your basketball, whatever. Why not have a nice storage uh, rack for those things um, and, um, you know, make it a real feature? But here are some other different ways that we can store our stuff. This is called a memory blanket. So it looks like it's been made from kids' clothing or maybe some of their blankets and those sorts of things. So rather than keep the whole item, it's been chopped up into little pieces and made into a blanket that can be given to the person or, or the little person to have and use as they're growing older. But it's a lovely way to um, remember somebody and to use those items and, and not have to keep the whole item. And I've also seen this done with um, gentlemen's shirts or pajamas. Uh, they may, you know, your dad or your grandma or some, sorry, grandpa might be known for their colourful shirts or their work shirts or those sorts of things have them made up into a nice memory blanket such as this one. 
Uh, this might be a nice little idea to actually store some of your memorabilia. You could put the items in it, but you may also be able to cover it and decorate it and make it beautiful like this. I think this is a purpose built, um, sorry, purchased one or bought one that looks like this, but you could stick your travel stubs, your photos, your postcards on a little suitcase like this and then put other items in it. Um, so we'd love your ideas on what you do with your memorabilia at home as well. Um, yes, sorry, I was thinking three different things at once then. Um, here is an easy way to store our photos as well and take a photo or scan them and have them on a, a digital photo display like this or I have a Google Home Nest um, it's a big one. It's like the size of an iPad and it sits on our kitchen bench. It does do all sorts of other things. We can ask it to you know, turn the lights off and on and that sort of thing. But I just love it for the photos that scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, so think about this for your easy storage for your photo collection. You can have them digitized. You could do it yourself, as I said, just by taking a photo of it or have them properly scanned. There are professional organisers here in Melbourne and around the world that will take your photo collection, scan them for you and give them back to you on probably multiple external hard drives, I think. They take up a bit of space if you're going to do them properly and it costs a bit of money, but if you want to spend the time to do it, um, that, that is absolutely the way to, way to do it. Again, I'm thinking of a couple of different things because I did promise that I was talking about um, photos and we are, oh yeah, there's a couple of different ways of storing photos here as well as decluttering them. Um, going back a step, we were talking about letting items go, um, you know, whether you, the, store, the sorting step would help as well. If we're talking about a big collection of photos, you can start sorting them. Uh, into the family members or the trips that you took or the time. So sorting photos might be helpful to get you on your way. But I did say at the start of this um, that um, it's sorting photos is could take you the rest of your life. So you need to decide how much time and effort you want to put on your photos, particularly if it's your printed photos. I think the digital photos are a little bit easier to manage just for the fact that you're not tripping over them. They're not deteriorating. They're not sitting in an attic, uh, you know, gathering dust. So it, it probably does take a bit more time and effort to sort the physical ones. But if you're going to start sorting and then letting the ones go, the blurry photos, the photos of the people that you don't know, photos of landscapes, you might, might be 100 photos of the Grand Canyon. Maybe you don't need 100 photos of the Grand Canyon. You might just want to keep a couple of photos of the Grand Canyon so you could let some go. So that could be part of your decluttering and letting go process. Um, so, again, my point being with photos, it could be a whole other, uh, other session. If you're interested in we could do it or I could get one of my specialist photo organiser friends to come and talk about it because it is a whole topic of its own. But uh, I just wanted to say those first few things about sorting them, about decluttering, and the, here's a few different ways of sorting your photos. But if it's a big project, you just need to allocate the time to do it. If you've got 100 albums that you want to scan and put digitally, have a good think about whether that's how you want to use your time. What are you going to end up with at the end? Uh, this, um, you know, is it something that you really want to spend that amount of time? And if it is, put it in the diary. Two hours every morning, like weekdays or something like that. Treat it like a job because uh, that commitment to getting the job done is the only way you will get a big project done like that. Let me just check the chat and see if people organise and... Um, Okay, someone says, my girlfriend gave photos she had of others back to the person in the photo. I love that one. And have done a couple of photo books at Kmart, cost-effective and easy. Thanks, Lindley. That is an awesome one. 
I think that you certainly could sort the photos like that and give the photos back to the people that are in it. I think that's a good one. Uh, I'll talk about storage of photos again in a second. Um, let me, I'll continue on. I'll just have a look at this chat while I'm here. Miriam says, I keep all the sweaters my mother made for me until a long distance move. Then I realised uh, most of them didn't fit, so I gave them to charity. Well done, Miriam. Uh, love the idea that somebody else can wear those special items that your mum made, and I bet they love them, and they have to be so warm and toasty. And Lindley says that a friend did the memory quilt with her teenage boys' T-shirts. I love it. That would be very cool to see. Very nice. Thank you for sharing ideas there. Let's keep moving with storage. Yes, we're doing good, um, but there is still more. So this is a good way to store your digital photos and be able to share and explore them and enjoy them with a digital photo frame, something like that. Going back to the kids' artwork or even your own artwork, something you want to display, you can get these easy mount ones and there's a lot of people, I just happened to come across them online the other day, they they're coming in many different formats now. So if you look at um, easy display uh, art frame, something like that, if you Google it, um, you can find this particular one, the little Da Vinci art frame one, but it's quite expensive. It's available here in Australia. But as I said, there's more and more coming on the market. It just opens, has hinges on it, and you can put artwork in and out. So this might be the photo of the week or the kids' artwork of the week. You'd easily dis display it and swap it or your postcard of the week and get into a nice little routine and rhythm each week. You change them uh, so that you can display lots of different things. Uh, just as Lindley was saying about easy storage for photos, uh, lots of different places online or simple like Kmart. There's different ones, Snapfish, Vista Print, Memento, you can uh, take photos of things, even the kids' artwork, and put it in a beautiful book like this. Relatively inexpensive, easy to do. Again, just uh, choose the amount of time and amount of money you want to spend on it and, and go for it. Don't make the project too big or you'll never get it done. Um, just decide, I'm going to choose 200 photos, whatever your boundary is, and go for it that way. Uh, Thank you. Oh, thanks, Mary Lou. She's just put the link for that kids' art frame in the um, in the chat. So if anyone wants that one, let's keep on moving. Easy storage for your spot, uh, your stuff. Once upon a time, we might have had like a big china cabinet and um, hundreds of knickknacks, but maybe we just have a small little acrylic one like this one for Muji, and it just has a very few your favourite little things, um, like my pineapple here. Where is my pineapple that my friend Christy gave me? I love my pineapple. You know, we don't need too many of these knickknacks these days. Let's see if we can whittle down our collection and just have a smaller amount so we've got more room for other things. Then you can get these little photo cards. You can put a postcard in there, a photo, string them up around the house for easy display. Uh, and um, talking about kids' artwork and these sorts of things, this is Charlie's artwork and schoolwork from 2020. It's just like this photo shows here. It's a plastic pocket. We just buy them on at Office Works and lots of different places here in Australia. And it's just got all of his schoolwork. This is all we kept from 2020. Surprised he did that much in 2020, considering here in Melbourne we were locked down most of the year. But this has got his school photos in it. It's got his school reports, um, certificates, and all those sorts of things. So that's all we keep every year. It does add up and is a lot over 12 years of school, and then maybe they might go to uni. But at least it's we've got a bit of a boundary. This is all that we keep for the kids each year. You might like to set yourself up a boundary for some of your past schoolwork or artwork or um, studies in the past. You might be able to whittle it down a bit. Uh, it might be you still want to hang on to some of it, 
um, but you might just be able to give yourself a boundary uh, and some of these little things, some of these tips might be helpful. Which of those storage things that I shared today was the, the best one that you might take on? Would love to hear your thoughts there. Uh, as I said, if you have any other ideas or, or have run out of ideas, let me know. Send me a message. We'll give you my contact detail shortly, but ask a question um, of us if you've got something specific you want to store, but also just Google it. You know, how about storage for footy trophies? or storage for um, lanyards that you get with your um, you know, membership ticket when you go to your local um, sporting games and those sorts of things. So many different ideas online for storage of stuff. And the last step of the space and time organising system is maintenance. Uh, let's have a quick look at the chat before I do that. Uh, Mary Lou says she loves the storage photo that we use for the kids. Sorry, the storage album. Uh, Mary Lou, uh, yes, Lindley loves the photo books, the art display frame. Great Christmas present for a daughter and sister with small kids. Yeah, those display frames would be a, a good one. And Miriam says they've definitely wanted to make a favourite T-shirt quilt. Lovely, Miriam. Would love to see that if you have when you get that done, send me a photo. We'd love to see it. So glad some of those ideas are helpful. And when you know you are displaying your favourite things, it just gives you so much joy. Rather than it being stuffed under your bed, stuffed in the attic, you know, boxes and boxes that nobody ever sees, having something like those photo books that you can look at or the little frames, or as Miriam just said about the T-shirt memory quilt, I mean, how awesome just to be able to see it and use it and enjoy it rather than that weight of having too much of it. Let's honour those special items. Okay, maintenance tools. We are going to be accountable. Uh, so let me know if you need a hand. Uh, I can help you keep accountable, but otherwise get a friend, a uh, family member and say, I'm going to go through two um envelopes of printed photos before Friday you know set yourself a little bit of a task and I'm going to update you by Friday so get a little uh, declutter buddy a little accountability buddy and get them to help you because you're much more likely to do, to get the job done uh, if you've got other people that you need to report back to just start you know, it'll take a little time to get going and get into your routine, but soon enough, if you're going to sit down, uh, if you've got a big project, like I said, a big photo sorting project, and you really do want to do it, um, and you get committed, you know, I'm going to do two hours every morning, say 10 o'clock in the morning till, till, uh, till 12 o'clock, it'll just be part of your daily routine. It's just like going to work. You know, that's my job. I'm a photo sorter. And, you know, just start it. You'll, you'll soon get in the hang of it. And remind yourself of what you're trying to achieve and also what your um, what it's all about. Like you can have a little card. This one just says when I'm decluttering, I can find what I want in 30 seconds or less. You might write a little card to remind you why you are decluttering your um, home and your memorabilia and your keepsakes. And you can also get reminders that pop up. This one was a reminder that I've got to call somebody shortly. But, you know, you can have them pop up. This one was a reminder for the, the uh, workshop that we're doing right now. <laughs> um, so you can have them just pop up on your phone, you know, to, to remind you that you're doing, um, doing these projects and why we're doing it. So that's we can keep going and be in the, uh, the rhythm. So beware the temptation to collect more keepsakes and memorabilia. As we said, stop the stuff from coming in. Start decluttering something small, one envelope of photos, um, you know, whatever it might be, something very small and easy. And sort uh, things by the date, by the country, if it's the travel memorabilia, by family member, the child, if it's the artwork, uh, and start the sorting so that you can have an idea of what you've got, which makes it easier to be able to let some of it go. 
let go of duplicates, uh, let go of gifts you never like, donate baby items to children in need, and don't forget what's sentimental to you could be useful for someone else. Uh, set a limit to what you keep and uh, let more things go. Uh, yes, then Lee, the uh, recording will be available this afternoon. So you are very welcome. Look forward to seeing you soon. Um, display your items that you love and cherish. Don't put them back in the cupboard, out of the road. Store your photos in photo sensitive boxes by decade and label it and make it easy. You know, just a box, as I said, photo sensitive box, just by year, or well, this is the 1980s, this is the 1970s. Maybe that's all you want. If someone wants to see you with your permed spiral hair uh, that you used to get called two-minute noodles for when you're in grade six, well, you'll know to go and have a look at the 1980s uh, box of photos. So perhaps that's all you need to do when we're sorting and organising our photos. You decide how organised you want to be with these keepsakes and memorabilia. Use labels and containers to make it easy to find things and put them back again. Uh, if you're going to be referencing like this, this um, thing of Charlie, sometimes we might want to have a look at 2020 and say, who was in his class again that year? Um, actually, this has got a big long list on the front of all the lockdowns that we did have. Um, 33 weeks of lockdown. But anyway, apart from that, um, if I got that piece of paper out, let's put it back in straight away. Uh, so get into a good habit of tidying up after yourself afterwards and return things to their permanent homes, as I just said, as soon as you have used them. So thanks so much for coming. Oh, how good are we for time? Uh, another workshop in two weeks, Decluttering Your Garage, uh, the 11th of May, same time. Uh, there will be a different link, so just make sure you register for that um, through Eventbrite. But we'd love to see you here for Decluttering Your Garage. Maybe your garage has some of your memorabilia and keepsakes. Maybe we can do a bit of a crossover for that one. Uh, we'd love to see you for that. Thank you. Mary Lou has put the Decluttering the Garage link uh, for Eventbrite. Please register for that one. Um, have a look in the chat for that link. And also we've got a um, six-week decluttering program coming up. Please let us know if you're interested in that. Six weeks, uh, just, whoops, I forgot. I just realised I didn't introduce myself. How's that happened? I've accidentally taken out the slide. Doesn't matter. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you're interested in taking part in that six weeks uh, decluttering program. And there's the link there. Thank you, Miriam. You are welcome. And let me know if you're interested in having a chat. If you're struggling, you're stuck, I didn't answer something that you wanted to know specifically about your memorabilia today, let me know. Uh, let's have a chat on Zoom. Um, send me an email or there is a booking link. Uh, that Mary Lou has just put in the uh, in the chat there. So grab that link, free chat. Um, we have pretty well finished right on time. That is so awesome. Very glad you could all come. As I said, if you've got any other questions, um, please send me a message. Julie, thanks, Bill. Great to see you. Julie at spaceandtime.com.au. I uh, look forward to seeing you at the next session, um, at the garage session. And um, the recording will be coming out this afternoon. We will send it out. And, um, yeah, look, really appreciate your attendance and your input today. We'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.